So we'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Any amendments to it at this point? Nope. Okay, hearing none, just need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We do have one appointment this evening. So Farron, are you representing conservation? Yes. So he's here and requests to give some money to the uh to the Vorec project for trails on Carlos Meadow. Correct. Yes. We're here to get the select board's approval to release thirty five hundred dollars of the conservation commission's funds to fund a VORET project at Carla's Meadow. And uh, right away I can hand it over to fellow CC member Chris Force and project manager for VORET to give you more details. Thank you, Farron. Um I'm Chris Wars. I'm the project grant manager, grant project manager for the Vorek grant. Um, Vorek, I think everybody knows, everybody that's here knows what it is. It's a Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative Grant. Definitely got a pretty good size one. Um, what I'll do, I, I wrote up a little briefing thing for the Conservation Commission as to why we're asking for this. And then there's been a more recent development that may negate us happen to use the, the funds, but things are kind of up in the air. So um, until recently, our Borat grant project requests for proposals have resulted in bids that were within or near individual project budgets. In November, we received bids on two of the primary trail trail improvement projects in the grant that were well above the budget line items. The Carlos Meadow trail improvements were budgeted for 10,500 based on 2021 estimates when the grant was originally written. The low bid for the project came in at 14,000. Since this project is primarily on town-owned conservation land, I'm approaching the Bethel Conservation Commission to hopefully secure the additional 3,500 from the conservation fund. The related project of the 3,000 foot pathway built to accessibility standards, and this is the one around the athletic fields, was originally budgeted for 33,000. And we expected that this was low uh, based upon the long delay in receiving the funds from the state. As people remember, I think it was over a year and a half from the time that uh, the grant was awarded and they were trying to get organized or something. So anyway, um, we knew that was going to be low. We did have, oh, that was turned down. Um, we did have the ability in the grant to move things around um, within 25% of each budget item. Um, but what we ended up with here was uh, a low bid of originally of uh, 103,000, so not even close. Um, in addition to the delay from the time the grant was awarded and uh, receiving the funding, we all obviously had a long period of inflation, uh, the supply chain issues, and we had the floods, all kinds of quarry materials went through the roof because of uh, you know road repair demands. Um, so I there were two, two bidders. I worked with both of them, and we were able to reduce the uh, the low bid to 79,600 and obviously still leaving a deficit because some of the funds that we're going to move around were in excess of 25%. I had to go back to the state. Um, working with the state is a long process, as some of you know. Uh, they didn't get right back to us. Um, and then they decided that they wanted to reevaluate the project because of the flooding in the summer, because obviously it is a shed plain. Um, so, uh, you know, we had a what I think is still a, a real decent proposal to eliminate some of the plans. We have a lot of plans that are gathering dust. So, you know, we had a couple of plans in here that are kind of plans behind other plans, behind other plans. So we just shuffled some money around, but kept. Uh, most of the important things and the actual projects on the ground funded. Um, but then because they wanted to reevaluate this, we've been tied up for months now uh, trying to figure out um, 
essentially the the town has permit jurisdiction because we have a floodplain overlay district, but because they control the money, they're requesting that some changes be made and, and less material be brought in, that sort of thing. Um, even though the town manager and the uh, the zoning the folks in town have already uh, said that it's an exempt project. So we're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place. But anyway, because of that, it, it may end up that everything is back close to our original budget and we may not need the conservation money. But um, when we originally requested it, that's the position that we were in. Um, are there any questions? We put the amount, I put the... Um balance sheet in here so you can see how much money the cons how much is in the conservation fund obviously this is a good use of that money i think the money here was earmarked for you know conservation projects obviously carla's meadow originally was a benefactor of some of the money uh to help you know get it to the river conservancy and and chris is right it's it's been a nightmare uh but all of a sudden the project is stalled he was right vorec we were awarded it took a year and a half to get the grant now we can't who's there's no actual permit seemingly required from the state but yet they're making us deal with everybody who permits anything in the area so <laughs> chris has been really good about trying to work through it and um so the 3500 would definitely help like chris said if we need it to you know to do the trail and at this point i think the trail is going to be isn't it just going to be natural yes material that was part of the give with the state that we needed to do to try to make it um more of a container walking path it's still going to be ada accessible it's just going to be a hard surface well prep or prep for <laughs> yeah yeah so and the conservation commission you said was in support unanimous support is not what you said Farron? yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think I would agree if the Conservation Commission is on board, this seems like a logical use of that money that's in their funds. Yep. yep. Is that a motion, Lindley? Sure. I move to <laughs> I move to grant the conservation uh no. I don't have it right in front of me with the wording. Thirty five hundred dollars, if needed, from conservation fund to the Vorec grant. So moved. All right. Second. <laughs> okay. okay, any further discussion? Thanks for the assist. Here, anytime. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the explanation, Chris. That was helpful. All set. That was easy. <laughs> All right, we'll open up for public comment. Is there any comment this evening that's anything that's not on the current agenda? Paul had, Paul's waving online. Mary is in the audience. Okay, we'll take Paul. And Lily's waving. So we've Let's got take the onliners first for once and go for it, Paul. All right, can you hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Chris, I was just wondering if there's any update from the school side. Uh, now that 850 was passed and signed, if there was any update about the budget or whether or not the budget vote's still going to happen or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, um, we have our next meeting on Wednesday night. Um, Is that a budget informational? Yeah, Okay. but we'll have a little bit more information. I mean, the, the information as of right now is that, you know, the 850 was was adopted um so what that means for Bethel at this point is it's it's now going to we're going to have to wait and see what the other communities do with their budgets essentially so um the the idea behind it right now is that if the other communities that were impacted by the cap now have to go back and restructure their budgets which is likely then the more restructuring that they do to their budgets um, the higher the, um, the yield will go. So the less money that will have to be borrowed through the state education system. So the higher that that yield goes, 
then that will help drive our tax rate down. So the the number that we have been playing with at the, at the school board is um, the number that was given for the report showed 12 cent increase at the budget. And we are hopeful that between the information that we've kind of been told from the state, that that 12 cents could become four cents at Bethel. So it could be could be a change of about eight cents on our tax rate here in Bethel. Uh, but again, that that really determines uh, how many communities go back and restructure their um, <clears throat> their budgets. And we may, and again, this is going to be one of those things that we're not going to know about until after town meeting day. So, because um, they usually won't have the yield 100% fixed until about May 1. So um, at that point, then we'll know. But it's kind of weird voting for something that you don't know that's even fixed. But mm -hmm. um, so, so they get this. So it's going to go on at this point, as is. The, the vote's yes. going on as is. Yep. Now, and then some of the information that you've probably heard in some of the communities is some communities right now have have moved their – well, some communities have have used um, some other means to move their town meeting days back so that they can restructure their budgets and do it one time. And there'll probably be quite a bit of communities that won't restructure um, that probably will send their budgets down to be restructured. Now, in Bethel, our budget going down or up, there there really is no restructuring for us, nor will it really get a big impact if it did get restructured. So most of our potential savings is going to come from the other communities uh, restructuring theirs. So yeah, the other part of that, Paul, is that um, we'd mentioned last in last meeting is that the town of Bethel is appealing our CLA. And we finally we made the appeal to the state and then we sent in our list of what you know, issues that we had with the some determinations that the state made. So whether or not that's going to fly or help our CLA come up a little bit, if our CLA climbs a little bit, that would also help. But hard to know at this point what the state's going to do. We have submitted to the state our questions, so we'll see, you know, what we want them to revisit. We'll see if that happens as well. Because Yeah, I saw the, letter in, saw the letter in the packet. You, you've got to go to bat and uh, see what yeah. happens. Thank you, exactly. Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, we may, we, the school may have better information for Wednesday night's talk. Um, I'll talk with the superintendent and see if he, what other information was brought down since I think they voted it last Wednesday um, in Montpelier. So. All right. Who, uh, thank there was Lily. Lily. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for recently putting both the agenda for the meetings and the Zoom link on Facebook. I think it's super, super helpful. And also it wasn't there for this meeting, hence why I was on the wrong Zoom link and late. So just a pitch that I know you all are super busy, but I think it's a really useful resource and I always appreciate when it happens. That's all. Yeah. We, we do post it on Front Porch Forum, but it wasn't on Facebook. So all right, I'll make it out. Oh. All right. Well, good to know. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And any further ones online? Don't see anybody else. So we will turn in public. Mary. You want to go first, Mary? Okay. I can tell you a little bit about the Camp Brook restoration project, which is at the mouth of Camp Brook, <laughs> which is my property. Um, in the fall, I contacted, I with the advice of the town office, I contacted... Um, Jared Borg, who um, sent me to the Agency of Transportation because it's a roadway, uh, the bridge and the roadway there. And so I had a conversation with a couple of different people there. And um, they did send someone out to look at the amount of gravel under the bridge and on either side of it. <clears throat> and so then Du Bois and King did a survey in the fall, and I talked with a few different people each time they came, and they said, yes, it needed to happen. They would put this 
ahead of other things they had scheduled because they didn't realize it was such a problem because the gravel was up to within about three feet on the bottom of the bridge. My grandson could not stand up under the bridge because there was so much gravel there and it extended down the brook and up into the uh, river. So um, I waited patiently and the December rains actually cleared out the channel on my side of the bridge and uh, opened it up a bit on the other, but it's still a problem. Um, to back up just a little, because I'm not sure everyone knows this and, and it's pretty, it takes care of itself so well because after Irene, there were four levels of planning that went into the reconstruction of it then. And that was the um, Fish and Wildlife Department, the National Fish and Wildlife Department, the State Department. Um, the town, of course, was involved because we um, gave a lot of gravel from our property to repair the Camp Brook Road. And um, White River Partnership was also involved. So there were four levels of, and we as landowners were, the, were one of them. Um, so the latest thing um, is that I got an email this week from Bruce Martin, who's Vermont Department Agency of Transportation. He is a roadway design project manager. And <laughs> I discussed various parts of it with him and told him I was really concerned that the work that was done after Irene be honored and and um, and I asked a lot of questions about what they knew about what had happened there. And it was sort of sketchy. So um, he's coming tomorrow to talk to me and my son Colin about possibilities. Um, I do not approve of the plan which they have um, submitted because it, it asked for a, quite a bit of tree removal, which is very important in holding the bank in place when the water gets high. In December, it was right to the top of the bridge and the banks, but after the water receded, the channel was still there. So, and that's because White River Partnership planted hundreds of trees and particularly the willow trees. It holds it in place. I mean, the ice comes down through when we have an icy winter, which didn't happen this year. And it holds things in place. And, and after the water recedes, it's still there. There's more gravel than before, but... And there were put in... They put in um, three stone weirs after Irene. Um, one of them is still pretty visible. The one by the bridge is covered with gravel and I really would like to see that one exposed and doing its job again. So we'll see where the conversation goes. But. You do have a right that they, they need you to sign off on this yes. for them to yeah. do what they want to do. So you have some power in the situation. Hopefully you can come to that. Obviously you're outside our right away, but certainly if you run into something, I'm happy to, I know Jaron Borg pretty well. I'm happy to call Jaron and I can certainly uh, talk to Chris Bomb. He's our district four rep. And But if you end up not getting where you want to be, certainly call me or email me. I'm happy to make some phone calls and okay. do what I can to you support you. I just want the integrity of what was. Yeah, done. I mean, it makes sense. We've done projects like that in other towns where we do those root balls of willow for the specific same reason. So I can understand it. And hopefully when you meet with him, you and call and meet with him tomorrow, he'll see the you know, logic, because I remember you came in with a plan, you showed what they had done before. And, and you're right, if he's taken over for someone, he may not understand fully everything that has happened there. But so is he going to meet you at the house or the prod or there on the river? Or is he going to meet you at the house, Bruce, at your place or? Okay, good. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let me know how it goes. And if you need some phone calls made, let me know. I'm happy to do, you know, sure. What, what? I also did talk, I've got to mention that I talked with um, Mary and Greg Russ in, in the fall too. Yeah. And um, good. About their part in there. So yeah, absolutely. they're interested. Yeah. Well, hopefully once he comes down and takes a look at it and realizes what you're saying, that he'll 
but it, it works amazingly well. Yeah. And it was about 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you have any, if it doesn't go the way you're hoping, let me know and try to make some phone calls. And Thanks. I appreciate it. Not sure I have a lot of weight, but we'll throw around what we got. <laughs> See what we can do for you. Okay. But let me know. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm assuming that they're going to do the project like in the springtime. Is that the goal or? Yeah. Oh, right now? Yeah. I'm concerned about, well, there's not Spring much melt runoff this year, but of course we could have rain events. Yeah. Could have, continue to have. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be 60, but that's interesting. So they're going to do it now. Huh? Oh, good to know. Yeah, I spent the summer keeping the rain out of my basement. Yeah, yeah. I know, you mentioned. So yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad they're going to get on. Thanks. Anybody else with public comments other than Mary in person? Nope. Okay. All right. Seeing none, we'll close that and we will get to the budget informational piece of the meeting. So um, as we kind of went through at the first one a couple weeks ago, um, usually kind of how I do the the budget informational meeting addresses is at a very high level. And then if through the discussion, if anybody has any questions with either a uh, particular item or department or whatever, we can dive deeper into that. Um, so the, the the two highest levels to look at the budget is the revenue and the cost. The revenues um, don't, the local revenues don't usually change much. Um, those are things that are collected um, through the town clerk or um, state um, aid that is given um, to the town. So those the revenues uh, year over year in our um, town have changed four thousand dollars, and that's based on I don't know what we're at four hundred thousand or something like that. So it's um, it's not a significant amount of money by any means. Um, the and then the cost end of things um, had changed year over year um, for seventy two thousand dollars. Um, so there was a net increase of $68,000 change in our budget from, from the budget that we're currently in to the one that we're proposing now. Um, and then a lot of things um, um, at the town level, you know, thank God we're not the school and trying to figure that calculation out. But at the town level, for the most part, you know, you're able to control your destiny um, and usually it comes down to, you know, what are the services that the citizens want and and how much is that the cost to provide those services? And in this budget, for the most part, we haven't really changed any of the services that we had been providing. Um, the only significant change that we had in services that uh, we did change was um, uh, officially closing um, the constable department and and hiring that service out for the Windsor County Sheriff's, which we have started to have done. Um, so that's really the only significant change that we've done in our budget for services wise. And then the rest of it is the, you know, like everybody that goes to the grocery store or, or, or gets your paycheck, you see all the, the changes of healthcare benefits, um, inflated costs. Chris was just talking about, you know, material costs for, you know, his VOREC grants and things like that. So those are all, you know, majority of that is just all those costs that are continuing to move equipment costs, fuel costs, gravel costs, all that. Uh, and, and then last, we have a few, like we've talked about last year and we have done some of the projects and some of the projects are still coming this year is some of the uh, matching money for the grant money that we had secured. So um, last year we had talked about, there was four grants um, that we were successful on. Um, it was the Christian Hill um, grant. There was the money that we got from Bernie Sanders for Sand Hill. There's the sidewalk pedestrian grant that is Pleasant Street. And then we have a structures grant that uh, keeps changing locations, but we finally <laughs> finally used it just, just down the road from Doug's house. So, yeah. it's, um, so with those grants come matching money, so we have to make sure that we plan plan for those matches. Um, so the Christian Hill project was was done uh, this past year, so that was um, I would say a success. It's gone pretty well. It it survived the uh, July flooding, so um, we're lucky there. 
And then this year, probably the what we will see as citizens is the Sand Hill project um, between the Waterline project phase two and the um, Sand Hill piece will go be going on this year. So, and then like we talked about before, the sidewalk project's a couple of years out, and then the structure project we kind we'll of move, this summer we move a structure grant to something else, but we're hoping yeah. to get another one in its place. So yeah, from P Vine. We'll keep the temporary bridge on Peavine while we do the structure um, near Doug and Joanne's. And then uh, I think we're also looking at doing another grant project on <clears throat> Brink or Dart, escapes me right now. And um, also because of the December flood, um, we incurred another $30,000 worth of damage. So we have uh, those projects as well, uh, some on Upper Gilead, um, Woodland, and um, North Road. So Woodland, unfortunately, we had rebuilt in July. And then, of course, the flood in December uh, took some of that out. So we certainly have our hands full for projects this summer for road, along with regular you know, road maintenance. So, And uh, so I'll just kind of go through the high flyers in the budget. And it is kind of in order. Mm -hmm. So it starts at, well, cost-wise, starts page 50. Um, uh, th there is a piece in here you'll see on page 50 that the public works personnel uh, budget has gone down there. Some of that uh, money with the wages has been transferred to another department that we put it in. So it's not, not necessarily that it went down, it's that we moved that money into the parks department. Um, so it's a different um, place to recognize it on that. The, the biggest movers at the highway department was the materials, so we had two, uh, last year we were talking about salt budget and uh, we, the current contract we had at that time, uh, we were purchasing salt that, you know, in our budget wise was gonna be in the $60,000 area. And then we had to change our budget because there was fears of $115 a ton salt and stuff yeah. like this. So we changed our budget to 90, but now that the market, oh, thank God has stabilized on that, we're able to get back to um what it was before so we we're just kind of making a correction there so the salt budget has gone back to its um to its pre um pre-state and then but on the other end of that we uh the gravel roads budget is up um and some of that's just really just kind of typically whatever we don't use for salt we use for gravel in the spring and as we all know from all the calls we get that there's lots of gravel roads that need attention in our town so so the idea instead of just taking the salt completely out was to substitute that with the gravel to try to get some some more miles of gravel um rehabilitated on our roads and, and as we know we put a lot of gravel down this year and not necessarily in the in the order we wanted to but it was to to fix flood repair related things so a lot of the work that was done this year was flood repair, not necessarily road repair um, maintenance. So, so we're trying to catch up with that for next year. The um, the highway rehab uh, money uh, there, it, it shows that we're up $45,000 there, but that is the money I was talking about, about matching grants of, of money that we already have given to us. So, and it keeps us on that you know, that bell curve so that we don't have to keep going. Like, you know, the old days was, okay, we want to pave something this year. So we'll ask, we'll ask for a hundred thousand dollars this year to pay. And then the next year we'd say, oh, we don't need to pave. So we'll be down here. Then the next year we'd say, oh, we need all this. You know, we were going back and forth. So now we're just trying to get more of a bell shaped curve uh, by asking consistent amounts. Um, the ERAF, which is the money that is tied to the flood repair. Um, so, we had ERAF in there for the last two seasons um, from the 2019 flooding that we had been paying off responsibly. And um, usually you want to usually you want to retire that short-term debt in a three-year period. So um, so we had been uh, paying our ERAF or setting aside money for like the um, for the bridge that we still haven't built. Mm -hmm. um, Vanilla. so we've been setting aside money for that and then we get to the light at the end of the tunnel we're all set and here comes another one so uh, so now the money we've set aside in here is to pay off this new um, July flooding um, for the next two to three years so 
we're trying to get um, that paid uh, responsibly. So, um, and I think we had total about two and a half million dollars yep. worth of flooding in July, of which about a million and a half yeah, okay, is this. at the town level. About a million dollars is took place Here. up in the um, oh, camp up in Doug's camp yeah. country. Um, so yeah, so we spent yeah one point four million on not including Camp Brook, of course, right. and then our our share of that um you know that's then our share is going to be about 45,000 so the good thing about the million dollars worth of work that was done up on Camp Brook Road took forever because there's so many hoops to go through when you are dealing with the federal government however it's 100% paid for so we don't owe any money on that work up there so <laughs> it took us a lot longer to get it done should have been done a lot earlier, but at least it's paid for. And then the other 1.4 million and change that were, you know, the the different projects that we did, um, we are on the hook for 12 and a half percent of that dollar figure. So what we do is we take that dollar figure and we say, okay, over two or three peer, two or three years, this is how much we're going to have to ask for every year. Um, so that's what the ERAP is for. And we're still maybe on the hook for about 10 grand on Camp Brook that <clears throat> it, that um, federal highway is not going to cover um, for Jay McDonald to come back and do some cleanup. So we may be on the hook for, or at this point, we're on the hook for about 10 grand. That's the estimate I have. So um, so that's the ERAF piece of it. Um, uh, Mary has one. Yep. Since you mentioned gravel, I'll just um, interject that the plan that to um, take away the gravel, which is now in Camp Brook, um, they plan to have Casella take it away. The the stuff down in your place, yeah. Excuse me. The the stuff in the river by by yep. your house. That's when Casella, I asked Casella that question. That Casella is um, they plan to have Casella take it away. Yeah. I mean, it would to sell construction. Maybe, yeah. yeah. At least I don't know. Huh? Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't want to use that because all the silica dust that would be in that. It would once you put it down, you'd be driving over and just be dusty all the time. You'd well, Chris knows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um. So kind of moving along on that, we had the. Uh, we talked about last time, last year's budget, we had money set aside in there for a grader. Um, a combination of yellow iron has gone through the roof to purchase. Um, that with actually trying to find a grader that you would like to purchase, uh, we decided to push the purchase of the grader off a couple more years and had authorized to invest some, some monies to... Um, to maintain the grader and keep it on the road for that period of time. Um, so there was no greater payment in there um, for this year. So that made, you know, that portion of the budget go down a little bit. Um, the uh, municipal offices wise, um, some of the things, on the movements on those for the most part is, um, benefits and health care and there was some extra money that was put in there to help out with um uh, a part-time um helper um so one thing we we've been consistently shorthanded in the office um and then you know all it takes is a, an event like um, the FEMA event this summer that just really um, bogs us down. I mean, you could have one full-time person doing FEMA the whole year um, that would struggle to do it. So it's uh, something that we had recognized for a couple of years is too much that we put on some people's plates and also doesn't give enough flexibility if somebody's out in the office, how do we cover that? So, um, so we have that money in there. And let's see the uh, like, um back to the highway department um we did in so we took out the greater payment but we did increase money contribution money into the equipment fund so the equipment fund is what we use 
uh, to fund different pieces of equipment, trucks, graders, that kind of stuff. So we have increased the amount that we allot every year to the equipment fund and, and, um, uh, biggest reason for that is like we were just talking about how equipment has just yeah. skyrocketed so even though we may not purchase the greater this year it might wait a couple more years but will the cost come down probably not yeah um so we're planning for that now and there's a schedule for that in town report and equipment plan and we have an equipment committee that talks about it and that was one of the biggest things after covid that prices of equipment just skyrocketed so we were <laughs> we were pretty far off so that's in the town report too, is, is an estimate. And that of course is just a plan. So it changes as the need changes, but, but that was one thing the equipment committee wanted was to see a big jump in that to, so they could actually keep up with big repairs and purchases. And then, uh, like I had said before, the, you know, the only thing in the budget that service wise, that, that, that we changed this year was um, the constable department versus contracting out for the sheriff. So, that um, amount um, was about a $15,000 increase over last year. Um, one thing to take note is last year we had $8,000 in there worth of signage to do too. So it's, if you take the signage out of that, it's really um, really $23,000 more into the budget to to get the, um, the hours of commitment from the Sheriff's Department that we started to see already. Um, we continue to use the Sheriff's Department right now to pay um, towards the budget that we had currently, because um, I believe we had, I don't know, thirty or forty thousand dollars that we had we spent. Thirty, yeah, we agreed uh, to do a thirty thousand dollar deal with them until the end of June. So I will, um, I will say that it, it, they definitely. Um, we were talking about the last meeting. Um, we definitely see a lot more activity um, with law enforcement in town. I, I did see that there was a big bust. Um, or we'll call it a rest that they had made. Not the one you sent us. Yeah, they had made. Was that the guy who Friday? Oh, I thought it was. Apparently, there was some. There's <laughs> some person that shares two communities um, here in Bethel and somewhere up in Berlin, mm -hmm. um, Vermont, that they had um, finally caught up with and taken off the street for however long. I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, at least it's just kind of showing. And that was a hundred percent. Um, made with the Windsor County Sheriff's Department. So, and that was a drug and gun possession, right? Yeah, it, I don't know. It ended up with a bunch of drugs they took off the street and some guns. and um, But apparently it was someone that kind of has connections to both communities that they had been watching. But so at, le at least, you know, things are getting done, um, which is nice to see. Um, slowly but surely. The uh, rec department... There was a, a decrease in the rec department and, and pretty much all that fund decrease was the difference of last year. The voters had um, voted to allow an extra $30,000 to finish the skateboard park. Um, that was in the budget where this year it's not. So that has been taken out. And then, um, like I was talking before, you'll see that the parks and public places department um, Proposal is up this year. A majority of that money is so majority of that money is some of the money that's in the public works that just got transferred. So there was a decrease in public works, move that work, that money to the pu public places. So we'll have somebody full time this year that will be just dealing with the parks and public places. As well as working for, you know, any water sewer matters, kind of filling that utility position again, as well as um, working for the road crew in the winter and this position is also going to do building maintenance and open and close the pool and you know, some things like that. So that we don't need Doug to be changing the traps over at town hall and the light bulbs. Uh, we'll actually going to have someone to do the maintenance stuff. So, so for the most part, it was just kind of what bucket we're putting that cost in. The, do, 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 we talked about that. Um, and then we increased some money into the government ops piece of it, which is, um, which was into the capital improvement funds. Um, you know, we're still working on our plans slowly. Every time we have a bump in the road, it takes a little extra time, but we're still working on, you know, our project is to do something with the public works building. 
Uh, of course, every time we start getting some momentum there, something happens in town that, mm-hmm. you know, um, that shifts the focus, but um, we're still planning for a new or refurbished building yep. um, here in the short term. So we also are going to have energy audits in <clears throat> before at town hall or town office and this building through the Merck program. So <clears throat> I'm hoping to secure some funding to do some updates to the town office. Uh, we have a new roof and slay the basement, but we need the Obviously, that I probably stick a butter knife through the side of that building. So we obviously need to do some insulating of the attic and and maybe even some residing. We also know we have an underground fuel tank under that little add-on to the building that also needs to come out. So I have money set aside for that and have already talked to the environmental uh, organization. So we're going to have to pull that. So once we tear off that building, we'll have to tear off that little side piece and um, pull that fuel tank out of there. So good times. So we're going to be doing a few things there and hopefully securing some grant money to update the building. Well, and, and then there's one piece there uh, that you'll see that the phase two water line project that's ongoing right now that started last late summer um, didn't get quite as much done as we wanted last year because the contractor was on hold for flooding, uh, doing repairs otherwise, but, but the clock starts on the payment back to, um, start paying off the bond. And we had agreed as a town that a portion of that bond payment would be put onto all of the taxpayers. Um, And the piece of that that we're repaying as all of us taxpayers was the pieces of the roadway work that typically would have been done under a normal tax budget anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, drainage improvements and, and redoing the blacktop and things like that is what we're actually paying for as citizens where you know, the, the, the water line itself and incidental works with the water line is still being paid for through the water services. Um, but the clock starts on that. So we're going to have to, in this next budget, we're going to have to make our first payment. So that's $13,000 that's and in there. Lenny, uh, Leonard did have a question too, just because of the way I worded the warning about that it doesn't include the additional articles, library, food shelf, playhouse. Yeah. So I did tell him you'd get to that as you wrapped up yeah. your just so um you know that last so just kind of question yeah so just i mean usually how we do it is um so just the what we'll call the the town budget base budget um has a net increase of sixty eight thousand dollars and uh when you're talking how how do we pay for that by the penny on the tax rate um it can fluctuate depending on the grand list um but this year you can use for every $21,400 of cost difference or net difference, that's about one penny on the tax rate. Um, and then, you know, if if you're looking at one penny on the tax rate, um, if you have a quarter million dollar house and you add one penny to the tax rates, $25. So it's, um, so th- so right now what we're looking at with the $68,000 is, is about a three cent increase so when the grand list doesn't change drastically, which it shouldn't, um, is a three cent increase over last year. And now just uh we, we were to back up, I don't know, nine years, eight years ago, maybe somewhere around there, um um we had determined as a board, uh well, one, to draft responsible budgets but actual budgets that are um you know in the past we kind of felt that sometimes the budget was the budget and you spent more if you needed to spend more um instead uh you know we and and that when i came onto the board we had about 1.2 million dollars worth of deficit at the town um that we retired for long-term debt and some of it was definitely overspending through many budgets. Some of it was related to the old Irene um, and there was other components in there. Um, But at that time we kind of determined that, you know, going forward, what is, you know, what is a reasonable budget to propose actually? um, And what is, what is something a bell curve budget that we can ask for every year rather than some years we ask for a lot and other years we don't ask for anything at all. So we had determined at the time the board, when I say we, cause I'm the only one left, but me. Well, Lindley. 
I think it was just before Lindley came on, but there was like, you know, it was Carl and myself for a couple hours and was that we came up with that. We felt that a three cent increase target a year would be something that could follow inflation, but also follow the um, services that were demanded by the citizens in the town. Now, if you go back over the last nine years, we haven't been three cents every year. Some years it's been one, two, three and a half. Also um, depending on the grand list. Yes, depending on the grand yeah. list. So like two years ago, we thought we were putting forward a two and a half cent increase and it ended up being nothing because the grand list had moved in such a way that um, it ate the increase. Last year, on the other hand, the grand list shrunk just a little bit. So the three cent increase that we did ended up being a little bit more than three cents. So, uh, but I think if you went back and looked over the last seven or eight years that, you know, it the average has been under three cents. Um, so that's kind of just something as a board, a mechanism that we look at to say, this is something that we believe that we can continue to do the um, the same line of services, if not better services, and it's affordable for the citizens. So um, so that's kind of where we kind of start our budgets. We always, how we start our budgets is we work. throw everything in so all, what yeah. do we want? And then we start looking at it and go, how do we pay for it? Yeah. And right. then we kind of whittle it down. This year was kind of challenging because quickly a lot of the costs were inflationary costs, flood repair related costs. So health it insurance, health insurance and those things. So it didn't really give you a lot of things to say, Oh, we'd like to put this aside for a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I will say that it was kind of been more of a tighter budget. Um, and we're seeing budgets across, you know, I'm sure it's in other States too, but definitely in Vermont, you're seeing in every town, you know, the town budgets up, the school budgets up. I mean, everybody's stressing about it. And so we tried to come with, you know, put forward, what can we do? We were able to luckily not take away any services. We added one service, which was nice to have the full-time, we'll call it full-time sheriff's department, but better than what we were getting before and at three cents. Now, the other piece that has been more challenging than normal is we do have from time to time added um, voted items. So a standard year, uh, just a standard year, uh, maybe this will help Lenny's question, but a standard year we have our standard budget, and then we typically vote in the human services piece, which is uh, a, a dozen do dozen human services that um, Paul and his board put together. We always vote on the White River Valley ambulance as a separate item. Um, so those are, they pretty much get voted every year, um, even though we kind of say they're our base budget, but they get voted in separately. And then every once in a while, we'll have something new. And the something new can be two, one of two things. It could be something that the select board says, you know, I think this might be above the base budget, so we want the voters to vote on separately. Or an identity could go and petition for something and have it put right on to the warning without the select board. Which is what the Playhouse Theater So did. as we go through this four additions and and two of the additions are oh petition both two of them yeah two of yeah, them were yeah. petitioned so those aren't something that the select board decided to put on there though so um and as we found out with gene like we even have to put the wording on there so yeah. even if the wording doesn't 100 percent follow the action item that's the way it's worded so so the four extra items and don't want to get people confused because when I say extra items, we still are voting on the uh, White River Valley Ambulance. We're still voting on the human services. Um, so when we get to the human services, the one of the first ones is the food shelf. So the food shelf had reached out. So just to put this in perspective, our whole human services budget for a dozen items is about $27,000. And the food shelf had asked for twenty five thousand, so it basically asked for almost the the whole budget that we had allotted. So we decided as a select board, uh, and they 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 did this informally, so they didn't petition for this. Mm -hmm. They came to the select board to ask us, and we said, "Well, being that this allotted amount is the whole budget mm -hmm. for the human services, that we would put that on as its its own standing item." Um, so the food shelf will be on there for twenty five thousand dollars. 
and um, which means that that's about a, about a penny and a quarter of if you vote the food shelf twenty five thousand dollars, that's an extra penny and a quarter on your tax rate. Um, the other piece was the South Royalton Senior Center. And if I get it wrong, yeah. Paul, because I don't okay. have it right immediately in front of me. Just 30000 was what they asked for. Remember, the library asked for 30000 but we put five in the budget, and then they're getting their 20, they're asking for 25 separate. Because Paul said, remember, the library asked for 30. I mean, the food shelf okay. asked Lost for 30. Me, me. Yeah, food up. shelf asked for okay. 30. Same thing. So, so 25 we, extra. Right. So 25, we agreed to put, you right. guys agreed to okay. put five in the budget, then their petition. That's 25, right. same thing with the library. You treated them, yeah. you treated the food shelf as you and, did and, the library. And a, a large human services one, I think are like $6,000 mm -hmm. is like a large one. So, okay, that's right. Sorry about that. And um, the other one was South Royalton Senior Center had asked for more than normal. So they had asked for a total of 10. And how much, Paul, did you guys give them on that one? I didn't have it right in front of me. Well, they asked four. They asked for four. And then right after the human advisory for, committee met, then the senior center met. And then they're like, oh, actually, we need 10,000. So they petitioned okay. for their extra money. Right. Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that'll be another one where there'll be $4,000 under the human services umbrella to vote for. Yeah. But then they're also looking for an extra 6,000. Um, so that extra 6,000 has been petitioned. So that will be, um, for one to vote on. And then the playhouse theater for the first time last year, the playhouse theater had, uh, petitioned to have an item for a thousand dollars at last year's meeting. And this year they did the same thing, but they had asked for 3000 this year. So those are the different. So the two of them to combine South Royalton and the playhouse are, uh, like 40, like four tenths of a cent, <laughs> um, on the, on the tax rate. And then the last one we had was the library. So we had, um, we were talking with some of the library folks at the last meeting. So the backup maybe five years ago at the most is the, um, allotment for the library used to be $2,500 a year. Now, now, remember, it's not a town library, um, but we had uh, appropriated money a year to help them. So $2,500 was the amount. And then about four years ago, they um, asked for double the budget to go to five because they had some computers or they had a bunch of uh, equipment that was going to be all expiring at the same time. They wanted some help with the computers, so we doubled it to five. And then last year... They had asked for 75. 30, they asked for like 35 and we put 75 in and, yeah. and had them stand up and discuss the additional 27.5. And so, so they originally had come to us asking for a larger amount of money than, than the five. And, and the conversation started was, um, cause the, the library currently um, doesn't don't want to use the word endowment, but they use. Oh, what did she? They, investment. Investment. They account. have like an investment account, and what's been happening is because the interest rates have been low for quite a long time, is they were borrowing more. There's Lisa. They were borrowing more money a year, um, than the interest was serving on it. So, um, they were continuing at the library, um, to eat their investment account every year. So, so we had talked, um, last year about, you know, what, what is the, what is the potential future of the library look like and how can the town help out more? Um, so, you know, we kind of went through this whole exercise. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but, um, uh, we, we had done some research that a library of our size should be somewhere around a hundred to $125,000 a year funded library. Um, if we had like the perfect one, um, but right now, I believe ours is like right around 60. Does that sound right, Lisa? 60? It's about $50,000, yeah. And so, that doesn't include grants and that kind of thing. Yep. So um, so this 35 that was brought up last year was really kind of uh, money that would allow the library to not have to eat into their investment account. Um, 
So hopefully that that will build so they can build the interest on that and be able to use that going forward. But at the same time, um, we wanted to start working with the library to try to figure out what is the f vision or future of the library in the town look like. Um, some towns fund their library completely, you know, for 70, 80, hundred thousand dollars, you know, up until four or five years ago, we used to fund 2,500. <laughs> so right. um, vastly different. So what we've agreed to do again this year was to appropriate the $7,500 like we did last year, and then to vote the extra $27,500, um, just like we did last year in its own article. So, um, so now the, the four total article items, we'll call the extra items, food shelf, South Royalton, uh, senior center, the playhouse and the library together is about another three cents. So, um, so on town meeting day, um, if, if the, if the normal budget and all the add-ons were all voted in, that, that is a total of six cents, um, on the tax rate. So three, three for what, for the budget that the select board put together and then three worth of potential add-ons that can be voted on separately. Um, it always gets a little confusing the way it's worded on the, um, uh, the warning Lenny, and we've been down that road, uh, year over year on because sometimes when we we always go back to the one where everybody got confused that year and uh somebody wanted there was i can't remember what the add-ons were but there was like i do remember it was fifty five thousand dollars of the add -ons. <laughs> and i don't remember what they were but somebody um got up and amended the budget to take fifty five thousand dollars out and so course that gets voted before you do any of the add-ons so it went through we deducted fifty five thousand out of the budget and then they went through and voted in all the add-ons so not only did you vote in the fifty five thousand dollars of add-ons but then we had to go back into the budget to five to, to fifty five thousand dollars out that couldn't be the add-ons because they were voted in separately <laughs> So it was that that was the first year I was on the board. So that was like the first thing I was like, oh, we got to find a way to cut fifty five thousand dollars of the budget. So, um, so I always will remember that one. It was just, it it's confusing sometimes. Um, so that was the um kind of the informational por portion of the budget. Does anybody have any questions or comments? There will be at town meeting day. Um there will be different individuals that will get up and speak about different items. Um, I'll probably be talking about the, the budget. Um, I know Paul will probably talk about the human services piece and, um, and we'll, well, I think we have and an item to go through that with Rick to, anyway. Yeah, so Rick is up next to sort of to go through that. So there will, <laughs> there will be the ability to have more conversation before, um, before voting on some of these potential ones. Comment. Probably should have brought this up a long time ago, but if we are see if the human services portion that we vote on separately is not sufficient, we may want to consider increasing that that amount. It's never been a, it's 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 never been decided on by the select board that they'd have a budget. They just always, people seem to have asked for around the same amount of money because the select board has, in my tenure, has never come out and said, you only have $30,000 to spend. Um, I just think historically that's where they've been. But it's certainly a discussion to have next year um, in budgets because I know the library wants to be fully included. They don't want to have a separate article next year um, where they have to stand up and ask for their 27.5. So it's definitely going to be a conversation to have around budget time next year to talk about what we're going to do. Paul's waving. Yeah, Paul. What? There we go. Um, yeah, um, I I agree with Gene. I think that we've been uh, operating under the same guidelines for many many years, and maybe yeah. we need to look at that and reevaluate um, who we uh, who we fund and who, you know, how much we're going to fund. And maybe that process needs to change. It's like everything else, you know, we've been doing the same thing 
you know, year after year. And maybe that needs to be looked at to see uh, who we who we fund and, and how much. So I, 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 I agree with Gene. I think it's a good idea to look at the way that that's man, how that works out. I agree. I mean, not to say you want to go this direction, but I know a lot of communities, they, um, they will budget certain identities like that based upon so many pennies on the tax rate. So I'll make it up. They'll say, we'll, we'll set aside three pennies on the tax rate to do human services or, or to do road construction or whatever. And, and then that, then, you know, so if three pennies is sixty thousand dollars, and you know that that's kind of your budget. Mm -hmm. um, and then people can kind of quantify that in their head with their tax rate. Um, but it might be always, something. I've always just looked at it as trying to, you know, keep the minimal impact on the tax rate. Um, right. But I think it it needs to be looked at again next year. I'd like to see another member get on the board and just kind of look at the whole process again. Part part of what I. If that's our, if that's the human services that we provide as a town, it seems to me that that's that could be more. That's just a that's my observation. Uh, I'll work with you, Paul. Thank you, well, it's always an item that gets voted on separately, right? Right. So there's, I think there's. The ability to, within reason, well, whatever reason means, mm -hmm. is to put forward whatever that budget is a year, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it might be helpful to have some sort of direction, right? And maybe that direction isn't a select board direction. Maybe that's a, you know, a, getting some town wide information on how much should we spend a year on human services or something like that. And then because it's really, not really the select board duty, the human services. That was the piece that the select board has more or less delegated to be put together by others, right? right. In a committee form. So yeah, like, a, good thing to, a good thing to get together with the human services committee, look at how they've done it in the past and what the options are moving forward. I know we've had other ones in the past. Dave like, Betty has his hand just up too. In the old day, like I know like stagecoach and stuff have always, you know, said, hey, we I know we asked for six, but we really would like 10 every year, you know, and then we say, well, we can give you six, you know, and that's kind of the way it's been, right, Paul, for a, for a long time. So they went from four to almost eight and we split the difference and went halfway. So, yeah, but there's no real guidelines. It's just a lot of um, anecdotal information that the board, that the committee has and trying to balance um, tax implications uh, with with how much we want to give to these folks. So I think, it, yeah, it needs to be looked at uh, completely. Yeah. Yeah, I think the select board should meet with the Human Services Committee and give them some guidance. Yeah, something, Dave? Well, I was just, uh, we don't provide any services there. Those services are provided by each entity. We just provide some funding. Uh, and for the most part, it's not, we haven't had uh, such large asks as we have had this year, and we usually fund what they, within reason, what they ask. So uh, I guess I'm just one of those guys, that I'm not gonna throw $10,000 at you if you only want four. <laughs> if you want four, why do I wanna throw 10,000 at you? Uh, so I think the way that it has been worked has worked fairly well. Maybe it needs to be revisited, but I don't think we should monkey with it too much. Okay. Yeah. Lindley, did it, did you have your, I thought I saw you raise your hand, Lindley, no? No, Leonard's had his hand up for a while. Just wanted to make sure he got hurt. I, I was just trying to see how long you keep his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just, Lenny. I'm just, just out of clarification, and I know we, these, some of these entities are important to the town. Are you saying that the way it's done now, they could ask for any amount and it would go on and it would be voted on. Like the no. town, like they, so could what? Come in, they could come in and say, I want a hundred thousand dollars and give you some sort of reason for that. And that would go on to a vote. Is that what you're saying? So right now, Lenny, we have, um, so we have the human services committee that uh -huh. meets pretty much once a year, right, Paul? Yes. And so every year at a certain time, um, 
these um, human services identities can petition, well, write to us explaining the services that they provide to the town and how much funding they're looking for us to right. give. And all those get sent to uh, Paul and the human services committee. And then they look through that. And typically they're all the same providers from the previous year. They just, uh -huh. um, they, they update their information and send their request in. And then Paul and his committee then get their request, which, which what we're saying, and I think this is where Dave was saying is on a normal year, most of these are saying, Hey, we're looking for $3,000 this year or $5,000. Now there might be the occasion that someone says, you know, we really like stagecoach a couple of years ago, we really would like eight and we were budgeting at four and then the committee ended up giving them six, you know, they met them halfway. So I think within reason, you're right, Lenny, so that somebody could say that we want X amount. Obviously, if somebody said we want $50,000 and our, the whole cap is, or what we typically use is 27, then that becomes something that the human services has to has to decide like, hey, we, we won't give you 50, but we'll give you five. And if you want more, you'll have to go to the select board to see if you can get put on the warning or have it adjusted. Um, but remember, anybody, during the human services, anybody can stand up and testify for the human services. If there is an, you know, if uh, we had that a couple of years ago, somehow accidentally we had left off one of the human services funding. I think it was $1,500 or something. And it was added in on the floor um, to, to double their funds because we had left it off. So, so there's always that the amending that can go on. Yeah, Lindley. Um, just for clarity, and maybe this is more of a Therese question, what what is the breakdown or how does it get defined uh, between, in, in the appropriations category, there's local and then there's human services? Because we, we're not voting on local, we're just voting on human services. So how does, how does that get defined? Who falls where? Well, I, it's been that way for you guys for years. It's nothing I changed. Uh, so things like Two Rivers, uh, VLCT, where our dues are, so we're participating members. Those go under, for some reason, I don't know whoever mm -hmm. named it local appropriation, but that's how it fell. And um, so I'm not sure how they ever got divvied up. That was long before me. Um, it's just the way that your budget's been built. A lot of times people, instead of calling those local appropriations, those are really dues and things like that. So um I'm not sure there's a big difference there. Um, you have just always have voted on it that way. But I do think it's something that, you know, we should just revisit in general and um, and talk about when we meet. You know, I think the select board should meet with the Human Services Committee and, and talk a little bit about it because, you know, to see what there are for guidelines and stuff. But how they ever split it up, I could not say, Lindley. <laughs> well, and I was just, I was trying to sort it out, you know, how did the Bethel Library end up there, but not in human services and the Bethel food shelf ended up in human yeah, services. Yeah, I think because, you know? li yeah, library had been there for so long because they'd been receiving $2,000 for years. So I'm not sure <clears throat> when they set up the budget, how that worked. And maybe somebody just did it accidentally that way. I'm not really sure. They just labeled it local appropriations and I'm not sure how the how the difference came up, but certainly, um, you know, the library is a local entity, but Two Rivers is not. So I don't know how they worked it out. But again, those are dues. Those are not appropriations. We don't appropriate money to VLCT or Two Rivers. Those are dues. I think a lot of it, Lindley, just kind of looking at now is that's the way we've always done it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a good question because just kind of looking at the appropriations category, probably a majority of those could fall under government operations, which is mm -hmm. dues and the things that we do every year. Yeah. And then there probably is two, maybe three of them in here that under appropriations that could go to human services. Right. Yeah. So I it, think it's just, a it could be of... something that we could look at as a board, just maybe we clean that up a little bit. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, the, the town has taken an eye with the equity and inclusion committee. We've taken an eye to that sort of equity. And this is an area that seems like maybe it needs a new, uh, a new eye to it with that lens of, is this an equitable choice that this entity is in this category and this other entity is in a completely different category, one that's voted on and one that's not right. It right. Feels, mm. um, I would also, if you're open to this, I would like 
to request to be part of that meeting since I've been so much part of these discussions, even though I'm not a member of the select board as of when that meeting happens. Um, it, it might be a helpful thing and it sounds like Paul needs an extra board member and I'm going to be lack of a board. <laughs> but I got plenty in my bar. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't you trying to relinquish some of your responsibilities? Yeah, your board seems easier than the select board. <laughs> so I think it's just a matter of relabeling, honestly, and reorganizing your budget. I think that's what it falls down to is removing that header local appropriations and and like Chris says, yeah. move it around. It's not a big deal. It's just some relabeling and but certainly as something as as I made it only brings cookies to the meeting, that's just fine. That's right. So I made a note. Yeah, so we'll look at that going forward. That definitely a good point. And no promises on cookies, Paul. Yeah, there you go. All right. Any further questions on the budget itself? I don't see any hands up. Okay, so we will move forward on that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mr. Benson's here to talk about the town meeting warning. So we should start that by saying that this will be Mr. Benson's last draw as town moderator because he's not running again. So just so everybody knows, big thank you to Rick. How many years have you been a moderator for Bethel? 15? And counting, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a write-in campaign. No, I'm just kidding. So um, so just so um, people are aware, I just wanted to thank you for your service for oh, 15 you. years. That's that's yeah. wonderful. And as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I usually come in and touch base just before the town meeting to make sure to go over warnings. It's a little obviously different this year with the Australian ballot for all our elected officials. So um, it potentially could be a quicker town meeting, all depends on the discussion and we really shouldn't predict these things because sometimes you think there's not much. <laughs> we better have lunch there. This <laughs> it's going long. <laughs> you better plan on a dinner. But anyway, um, you know, article one is just information. Uh, basically there's no action to be taken on that and no discussion. As far as those positions that are open being how they're voting, being voted on that day. Um, and I did want to just ask, and uh, I picked up a little bit that Chris, you'll be you'll be speaking on Article 2, the, the main part of the budget. And I'm sure you'll be emphasizing that that is, as you were saying, X amount of money, three, three cents, whatever, and um, the rest will be added on. Right. They're all additions beyond that. So mm -hmm. folks have to be clear about that. Um, and other than Paul for, for human services, you, I'm sure we'll probably be representatives, that, as you mentioned, from each of the library, uh, food shelf, et cetera, who we'll, I'll recognize if they're there to speak. Um, Rick? So with the human services part, I would suspect that there may be some questioning coming from the floor um, about the process. We had a couple that we, you know, like the food shelf that we moved. We had a couple that we didn't fund. So there may be some questioning coming up from the floor on that. I would assume they'd have to go through the process of being recognized, et cetera, et cetera. But you might want to keep that in the, in the back of your mind. Yep, have you noted here to be um, speaking to that if, if need be. Um, but beyond that, I'm not sure if there's anything that you. Are there any questions on Article 10? Yeah, Article 10, and I'm not sure who's going to be best to speak to that. I mean, I can talk to that. I mean, you and I could. Article yeah. 10 is the listing, the but list. I could certainly answer the questions about the listers. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little great for me because I'm yeah. I'm filling in right. you know, as a. But I'm happy to answer the questions for the listener. Yeah, decision. I certainly understand why we're doing it, and I'm happy to. Yeah, and I'll make it clear that that's not a position that I'll be seeking, so that right. I, I don't have any. Yeah. We got to put you in somewhere. So. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> I also wonder if that might come up too, because I think that there's going to be confusion, as you and I talked about, between Article One and Article Ten. Yes. Um. So I do think that 
there's a little confusion because in Article 1, we're saying we're going to vote for listers, but Article 10, we're eliminating listers. But so if we were still voting from the floor, we would have voted in the moderator, town clerk, town treasurer, and then we would have had the vote to remove listers before we moved forward. But since we're doing an Australian ballot, it's a little weird looking it's accurate but it's weird so that may be a question is um there's nobody running so when people get the ballot they're going to see there's nobody running for lister um so that's but i'm happy to speak to article 10 um unless somebody at the select board wants to do it dave want to talk about article 10 listers or you want <laughs> no he's saying no i can read his lips no <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to answer those questions Okay, great. I have a and, quick question. Yeah. Um, just to go back to Article 6, and maybe there's a reason for this, but it seems that there's a discrepancy. The number listed in the article and the number in the printed budget aren't the same. Um, okay. I'll acknowledge, and maybe Paul acknowledges that and clarifies which one is the accurate number. Huh. Have to figure out which it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, 31915 versus 32165. I don't know. I'll have to look, Lindley. I'm not sure if that could be my mistake. It helps that we just spent so much time looking at the human services. Like, that's not the number we were just looking at. <laughs> Fair enough. 2024 proposed says 32165, which is what I wrote. But then I can see what you're saying. The article's off. So I'll have to go through and figure out what's missing because I could have sworn I basically. Was the uh, the the five thousand that the select board put on for the food shelf? Oh right, so, by two hundred dollars though. Yeah, I gotta look it's and see. Small difference. Might be something missing on the list. Yeah, I'll double check, Lindley, because I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Um, okay. Excel yeah. spreadsheet for you. Yeah, well, it's only you know, it's only as good as what I put into it. So um, I'll I'll look, but thanks, Lindley. I don't. <laughs> No, why none of us caught that before? Someone yeah, I'll look though. I'll um sorry, we stole their thunder. <laughs> we'll fix it. All right. Thanks, Lindley. No, that's a good catch. Thank you. I'll have to figure out what, what I missed. All right. Uh does not match budget. Okay. And um just a little bit of other information that the uh committee committee has been working. Um, Teresa has given us some in input after last year's meeting about other things we can do to entice or make the whole uh, experience more interesting for folks to increase um, attendance. Um, we're having the pies and coffee again. That's always great. Uh, we have a few more, I think overall, a few more people setting up their informational tables out in the um, the side lobby, um, which which is always, always good. We've been trying to get some representatives here from like Senator Sanders' office. Uh, we've not had any response from them yet. Um, we will be doing a little bit of free town meeting, I don't wanna call it entertainment, but things in the, in the auditorium to hopefully like at quarter up, get people to start hearing things going on in there and start moving their way towards towards their a um, little bit of um, uh, entertainment. I believe the uh, the girls who have the uh, cheer squad are going to be doing a few things just to get some excitement going. But this will all be prior to ten o'clock, so we'll be still starting at ten o'clock. <laughs> But so just um, just be aware of that. If you hear things going on, it's part of that. And um, I think that's about all I have to say. There is going to be child care. We are going to have, um, there, are, there are kids volunteering for microphone runners. There'll be, there'll be at least two microphones on each, one on each side for folks who can't get to the, the microphone in the middle, middle to facilitate that. Um, we are setting up a call system for folks who need a ride to town meeting. Um, Cindy Metcalf is handling that, so that is a, is a good service. Uh, so a few other things going on that uh, 
that we're hoping get, brings a little more interest to what we have left of town meeting. And hope, hopefully we're able to keep <laughs> the remaining what we have left. So that's really well, all I mean, that's definitely one of the nice things that hopefully we at least stick with the town meeting and the budget piece because you know there's a lot of things, even you know, we're just talking about there's an error in the social services warning here, which can be amended, you know. Right. Um, just like there can be things amended from exactly. the floor, like if someone wanted to add to a social service, they could amend that. And those are the really nice unique things about town meeting day that we have is we have the ability to vote and amend from the floor. Um, well, for you folks as, as a board setting a budget, when it's only Australian budget gets voted down, and you know how people help with the attendance is for budget hearings from meetings, it's, it's, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have an idea of what's going on, but if at town meeting, when you start hearing people, whatever, complaints or reasoning gives you at least something to work with that you had to come back with the nudges like yours are. I agree. I, I know other towns that have gone Australian ballot and then they do an exit poll and people write things like it's too much money. That doesn't help you when you need to go back and revisit, you know, if you're going to make a change or a reduction or whatever. So you're right. Town meeting is important to have a dialogue back and forth so you can understand, you know, representative of you know what people are thinking. So I think you're right. Agree. Yeah. So anyway, thanks. Thanks very much for uh, giving me some time. We look forward to um, next Tuesday. That's Have right. Time. There you go. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. So, so uh, may I ask, are you um, like when you use that to learn how to be a moderator? Are you grooming anybody? Well, um, I attempted to. Um, to, to find someone to fill it in. Uh, to my, right. Unfortunately, empty. actually, you know, sadly, the person who was really interested a few years ago was Carl Russell. He was, uh, was going to run that time. Uh, um, so I've spoken with a few other people. It didn't, didn't come to pass. So what will happen is, obviously, there may be a few write-ins. I believe it has to be 25 or 30, somewhere. There has to be a certain number. <clears throat> to win, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's allowed um but most likely it'll be up to the select, select board to appoint someone for next year mm -hmm. um which is kind of a burden on them but uh and i'm willing to um tutor work with anyone mentor um someone who's comes in to fill that spot and it, it's a it's a rewarding it's only once a year thing it's, which is good and bad i mean you really have to prep yourself because you do forget but um it's it's an interesting job, and, and I think there are certainly people in this town who are more than capable, much more capable than I am of, of that position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure it'll someone will step up here in the next mm -hmm. next year. If not, it'll be a very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll um very quiet. Yeah, the select board will have to uh, take applications, interview, and appoint. So. Yeah. Same process. Okay. So. All right. All right. Anything further? We're good to go. Good. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, well, we're also on the town meeting kick. So um, you know, we have Lindley and Jean who will not be running again. So, and both of them have put in quite a long time. Um, Jean served his three-year term. Uh, on the board, and we thank him for his service. And Lindley, I was trying to remember, it's three two year terms. Is that what you served? Because you and I were two years, right? I I was a two year term, but I was appointed before the election, so I've served about six and a half to seven years, somewhere in that. There range. you go. I'm trying to remember that. And she loved every second of it. <laughs> I did. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna come pester you just like Paul. Yeah, uh, I figured. <laughs> So it, you know, it, you know, thanks. Um, you know, Lindley's been, well, she was the second oldest member now, <laughs> even me. Um, and Jean, it was good to see a, you know, new perspective to the board. And, That's and, right. you know, as we say, it's not a very thankless job. Um, <laughs> it is a thankless job. People have job. <laughs> no problem telling you when you, you aren't doing a good job. Um, 
you know, and it, I guess it is, it's kind of one of those positions. It is what you want to make it right. I mean, mm-hmm. it could be something that you really don't put a lot of time in. You just show up to the meeting and go through it, or you could really put a lot of time into it and, you know, invest your time into whatever the items are and, and mm-hmm. come prepared. And, you know, and I, I really do think that, um, you know, that our, one thing I like about our board is, um, our members seem to be prepared to talk on the items and to make action on those items. And that was something that, that I really liked about Carl when I got on with him is when I got on with Carl, whatever it was, nine years ago, whatever, there was two pages of we'll call it action items that they had been carrying over for, I don't know how long, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that the goal was to try to check these things off. And it was just because, you know, the boards just weren't, necessarily uh, ready for action and that's not just at the board level but it's also you know Teresa does a good job of getting everything prepared and any information that we might need to talk about or to make an action on we have that information so um and and as you see now that very seldom are we not prepared to make action or if we are then the next meeting we usually get it through so um so thanks to everybody for their service and i'm sure we'll see you guys back again because everybody comes back so i mean look at paul i mean you know now he's running again i mean he just he didn't know what to do with himself that's so. right but don't forget planning commission oh. is looking for people i'm, on, need a, a I'm on a fixed which... income so i need i need to <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. That, you know, that, Dave, Dave was once on the school board and he thought he was all done with his service and now he come back. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, but, but there's other positions open. So just if you run for select board, you, you don't make it or you retired from the select board, the planning commission needs help. The, um, we need a town moderator. Um, just we, we need justice of the peace, right? We, we, yeah, that's right. We need, um, you know, the need, we just, we need every, every, well, maybe not the conservation commission. They're pretty well served, but, um, every committee needs members. Mm. So your service doesn't have to end here. Energy committee needs help. Uh, I, I intend to continue with one or two committees. Oh, good. Well, that's good news. And we'll find a place for Lindley. <laughs> And Rick. <laughs> Dog catcher. Yeah. Does that sound good, Lindley? We'll let you I drive the car. do that job. That's right. <laughs> you can use a cruiser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, thanks again. Yeah. And speaking of people, we have a uh, planning commission request to add Chuck Davis for a three-year term. Thanks, Rick. Yep. See you. Unless anybody has... Anything to talk about on that? I just need a motion to appoint Chuck Davis to the Planning Commission. So we moved three years. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Chuck stuck. All right. Um. And we had a second class liquor license. Thanks, Chris. Um. Have a good night. Um, for Sandboard Enterprises, I love the new um, template. I know that uh, I mean, you might as well just not even put it in there. I know. <laughs> I, I can't I even yeah. figure heads to tails on that. I thing. know. That's all Pam It used to be at. this nice two-page sheet. Application. And now I just like, I don't even know what that is. I know. It's it's what Pam It's a, It's almost about. like the... Um, it's almost like the um, constable information yeah. we to get from, oh, yeah. from Oscar. I yeah. gotta go, I, oh, I know. Is this, it is. It's ridiculous. Do I need a decoder ring to figure this thing out? Like, what is going on? I know. So. Oscars class? We're talking about the liquor license. This is liquor class here. Yeah. Yeah, no, we have, he hasn't gotten that far yet. He was just talking about the form. Oh. So, the sec, so they're looking for a second class liquor yeah. license and then a one-time. And then a one-time permit for wine tasting associated with the university. So Ellie was asking if you were going to sign up for the wine tasting class. Yeah, not a big whiner. <laughs> not a big whiner. No. <laughs> we'll stay, I stay away from the alcohol. No pun intended. Yeah. yeah. I'll go for the cheese. All right. <laughs> unless they have any wine. There you go. So unless there's any uh, discussion or issues with that, just need a motion to approve those two requests. 
So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Anything left on the town manager's report? That's so, uh, uh, yeah, there is something in there. You can see that um, I've never done this before. Put it in the packet, but um, Brian Wright, a resident of Wright Road, wanted to know about the highway department breakdown from December to February. So I just went through their time cards and came up with some hours. I wasn't going to reprint every single time card because he wanted to know what the uh, highway department, I guess, had been up to. So I went through quick and just tallied up everybody's hours. And then today he emailed me, wanted to know where they had br cut brush. So I told him it was Peavine Park, Peavine Boulevard, Camp Brook Road. He was going to go follow up and look in those areas, I guess. And he's requesting that this be done on a regular basis. But I'll be honest, I mean, I look at their time cards and deal with it. I'm not, mm. I don't necessarily have the time to to do this every you know, to keep an update on one specific department. I mean, you can, so I'm not sure if that's something that the select board wants moving forward. I did this as a one-time thing uh, for Brian to kind of see and, and um, but it wasn't anything I had tended to keep up on um, unless this is something that you want to see on a monthly basis. No, Denise? I don't. I see their time cards when I do the payment, right. but I mean, it's, they're busy. That's all I know is that yeah. they're in motion. I, I mean, I, part of me kind of likes it. Okay. Um, it was kind of nice to see what they've been putting hours to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I but can I, certainly create but again, a I don't want to put together something that is going to take a lot of time to put, you know, <laughs> So together there out there like line between the uh, supervisory board and micromanaging yeah i mean i and, just went through their time cards i could use this template and then just every payroll that i approve add their hours in but um you know we don't do it for obviously for any other department but they give me detail on what they're doing where they're calling because i need to see it they also do that because if they're working on grants or there's fema or so they're always very good about not like anybody's trying to hide anything they spell right out exactly what they worked on where they were what they were doing are those open? they are but i'm not sure i need to have everybody and their brother coming in and going through people's time cards honestly that's why i did it agreed to do it in a spreadsheet because you know i mean otherwise somebody you know but yes it's public record so i that's why i put took the time to put it together but if it's something we could try it for a couple months and not see that i want to like. open up the can of worms here but mm -hmm. so our current time card system at the town what what does that look like Henry. it's just paper okay. card on yeah. Has there been any discussions about maybe going to like an electronic time card? We might because there are very simplified versions of it that you can literally do on a, an iPad. Right. Um, for the and, and the nice things about that for you is yeah. you could just, I'll for make the, it up. I'll make it up. There could be like mm -hmm. 10 different categories that they could put their time into. Right. And when they put it into one of those categories, you could easily. If if you had a request like that, you could easily populate a report mm -hmm. rather than have to spend a bunch of time putting it up, right. you know, counting it up well, on a spreadsheet. It may be because I'm so. gonna start fighting with the state pretty soon about that software that I want after the whole FEMA mm -hmm. thing. And then they're coming around with their template and they're taking pictures and doing estimates, and then we're out, you know, the slide rule and abacus and a piece of paper mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. So I'm I'm going to look at that software and that may be more inclusive. It may do um time cards as well but i yeah, like I the think. detail because a this is easier for the guys they all either have a file or a clipboard up there and they write a lot of detail in there mm -hmm. about what they were doing and what pieces of equipment they were using mm -hmm. and so when i have to go double back to do fema work you know they're very specific about what they've been up to so i don't know so i mean i guess i just have to not that well, the nice thing that you can do lindley has her hand up too is and it doesn't take a lot as you can um and I don't even know what apps you have, but I'm just thinking back at my work. Is I have you, no apps right now. <laughs> you, you instantly you can go in and, payroll. you know, you can establish your your vehicle, you know, your equipment yeah. as well. And you can associate hours to that equipment. So you know that that equipment ran for 
a hundred hours. And that's what I, which I'm is nice about. things because you could pull up a report to say, I don't know, I'll make it up. Let's say a service is required after every 500 hours. And you yeah. can say, Oh, well that grader is due for service. And you know I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of nice things that can come out of that. I've had a conversation with Ryan Slack about it because the state has a specific software and he had gone to somebody at the state and said, why don't you let the towns use this? And that's what he does. And it's all very yeah. um, helpful. So I need to get a hold of, Ryan to see if that's the same software, this other software that they were using for road construction also does his payroll and vehicle maintenance. Mm. So I have to, I mean, cause it's, it's just awesome. I mean, it's yeah, so easy to print out a report. Like how much overtime do you have? Okay. We'll just print it off and yeah. say, Oh, we had 40 hours overtime. Exactly. And then, you know, and like, you don't have to like go through the time cards. And trust me. I've been through the literally, time Did cards, you have yeah. something? 800 times because of FEMA. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, if we go to an online system, that's solved. But I think the bigger thing is, um, I don't think it's a smart use for the board to approve Teresa's time spent on one citizen's concern. If the town was receiving a number of calls about, hey, the road crew is up here theoretically cutting brush, and actually, it wasn't done well, or it wasn't done at all, then that's legitimate reason to me. But the town isn't receiving endless calls. This is one person and to, to then generate more work for probably the busiest person in the entire town because of, of one concern versus an actual herd concern across the board, I, I think it just doesn't outweigh what the concern is. And unless they that citizen could prove, hey, I really think you're missing something here, or there were other pieces connecting into this that don't seem to be there, I don't think it's worth approving you to spend more time on this than it's worth. But that's just my two cents on it. Well, that's good. Yeah, unless cents. we are going to do it for all departments, I don't think we should do it for one. Right. On no, a no, regular it's, it's basis. Slow, it's slow, but it's, it's, I mean, now we want to know what Teresa does every day and what she does. And I don't write these. Well, I, um, but, but, but it could yeah, be, it could be, you know, yeah. what does this person do all day? Water department person, or? Yeah. What does Richard do all day? Or what does. Dietrich do or whoever okay, okay. it would be, it's a slippery slope in my um, well, I'll look into the side. Like I said, I have a note and it was for and I had told the state that that I was gonna gear up and fight okay. with the state after I got through FEMA because I want that software um for you know any any possible future flooding. So let's see what the software can do and um and uh see what see what we those, can do. There. I would again <clears throat> I'm not in favor of us doing this all the time i just thought it just sparked a, mm -hmm. a thing in my head thinking maybe we you know if we're not at this point if we're not digitalized we should be yeah it's a place and to think about. and it's not like it was 10 years ago where it mm -hmm. cost major money now right now it's you know um, huh. the biggest investment probably would be you'd get the foreman um an ipad yeah, and, and they have and one. iPads are very easy. You can put them in the the old you know, and they have indestructible one. case, and and exactly. it's really simple. And then even things like yeah, um, they have one uh, flood repair. You know, God forbid we have another flood, which is coming in four years, right? Because nope. they happen. <laughs> but at least at least then they could put on their time card. This yeah. was you could say, hey, I opened up uh, a phase code for flood repair. It's going to mm -hmm. be this that's on your time card, and then you know, bam, like yeah, all exactly. that times land in there or flood material or whatever yeah and then you can populate that i mean think yeah. how many hours you went through trying to figure that stuff out right where maybe <laughs> maybe many. hopefully you could just hit a report and yeah it come down exactly but. no it's definitely yeah so like i said it may be part of that software that i already talked to the one a department of vtrans about their piece and i have to just i have the name of the software and stuff to see so, so what was the investment. what was I, I saw in there what was the grant or what was the equipment associated with the grant that Richard Oh, that was Richard got, looking? yeah. So his is in here. Did he had something he was going to build or? No, what happened is, um, remember when we had our sewer, our wastewater treatment plant uh, review, they came in and the EPA had given the state some rules about five years ago. And they finally were saying, mm -hmm. look, if you don't enforce those, we're going to. And part of it is that we needed, um, we have to do this, use this new sampler and flow meter. And we ended up borrowing one from, uh, because of Clayton, our relationship with Clayton Whitmarsh working part-time for us from Heartland. Um, so we need to get this new sampler. We have one outdoors and one inside. And as you can see, the whole thing is over $20,000 worth of equipment. And last time um, when they came, mm -hmm. 
Originally, they said there was an application, a grant application. I came, went to the office to do it and it already expired. And so then they came up with this. So Richard did the application and is going to receive over $20,000 worth of wastewater equipment oh, nice. um, to handle those new APA um, requirements. So, um, and while we talk about that, we should talk about this. So a water customers or uh, users received a water service line customer survey in their billing statement. So they should have received it now. And what this is about is the state of Vermont um, department, you know, ANR is requiring us by October, 2024, we have to provide to the state a list of what every single water users service line is made of. Is it galvanized? Is it plastic? Is it lead? Whatever it is. And this tells you kind of a self-reporting, go in your basement and please tell us this information. And this is how to, if you need to do a scratch test to figure out whether what you got for metal in there. And we have to provide that information to the state. And so this was a first step. This was Richard's idea, which was a great idea. And because we have, you know, over 300 connections and water, so if the majority of the residents take the time to fill this out, then we fill this in along with your span number, name and address, and we'll know what your service line is made of. If whoever does not respond, we're going to have to hire someone, a contract or somebody to make appointments with every single person that does not respond and go in their basement and take a look at what they have for a service line and, um, and try to figure it out. So the state is doing this because it's an EPA requirement. So the feds tell the state and the state has to do it. So I spoke to a gentleman at the state today and said, you know, my guesstimate is that the state will at some point receive money um, so that if anyone, I'm not sure if it's going to be galvanized, but if they had a lead service line, the state will, the state will get money. They'll funnel it to the, to the town and the town is going to have to work with the homeowner to update their service line. <laughs> now I will say I'm opposed to this idea because our ordinance, as do most water ordinances, say stops the, at the curb stop. stops at the curb stop. Which it shouldn't matter what goes on but, behind that. But the state is not, what the state isn't going to do is they're not going to give out 500 individual grants to homeowners. So what they're doing is exactly what we figured. They're going to force it down onto the towns and we're going to have to deal with it. I'd push back. <clears throat> well, we haven't gotten there yet. So Because our responsibility starts at the curb stop. So as long, long as we are delivering water... In the quality that is laid out there. Once it gets to the curb stop, whatever happens beyond the curb stop is on us. And that's what I said to it's the panel today. I said, I'll be interested to see how much pushback you got. But he also said, that's why Bennington got $10 million in lead replacement because they weren't just doing a water project, they were also doing service lines. But I said, how are that's they doing people's service lines out? Did they, is their ordinance different, maybe? It perhaps could be, because but I know. I don't see how you would. It's not yours. Well, but you know what? The If they're doing it for free, then the homeowner's not going to balk. They don't want to have a lead water line, and they're going to let you free. come in. And I'm sure there was also easements. Hmm. So I'm sure that $10 million that Bennington got from the state was managing legal easements as well as the replacement. Hmm. So anyways, at this point, we have to, we have to you know, get this information done. And get it to the state. The state gentleman told me today that the EPA is, they're going to give the information to the EPA, but it won't have a name attached to it. It's just going to be the right. address with whatever your water line is. He also alluded uh, to the fact that maybe that it, I don't think it's going to be galvanized. I think it's going to be if you have a lead line, because he said, if you have a lead water line and somebody else is down downstream of that, that the lead in that water line could attach to another galvanized line nearby. So It'll be interesting to see what happens, um, but the requirement is that we have it done, and that's what we will do. Mm -hmm. We will provide the information to the state. Um, we do have access to a grant of about, I don't know, 30 to 40 grand, and that comes with state rules, which are either you pay for it in-house and use in-house personnel, or you hire a contractor. So at this point, we're doing what we can in-house because we do know from our $2.8 million water project and this two point $5 million water project. We do know what some service lines are. We're filling in that information, really encouraging every resident to take the time 
to fill this out and drop it off at the town office and let us know what your water line is. And then at the end, if we have 50 or 100 people left, then we'll take advantage of the grant and hire someone to to figure out what the rest of the water lines are or service lines right. are. Um, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm obviously we're well aware that multiple people have galvanized lines, but um, I'm not sure that anybody that we are aware of at this point has a lead service line. So, you know, after Irene, you had a lot of upgrades and things like that. So, something of something like that for high school. I, you know, honestly, at this point, I don't, I don't know. Um, just curious. Yeah, I, I don't have a plan yet until I see where we are and what this response round is. But yeah, I mean, it, it could be um someone who was you know obviously responsible but and um so yeah who's we'll to say what's it. coming in at the house of what's in the ground outside you know exactly like, so you're wanting us to go into the basement 10 times it could have been well, i'm it just saying be, like you go in your basement and look at it, it could be plastic but could if be you could get 10 feet outside the house that turned into exactly. could be old lead pipe in the ground. exactly I mean, you don't know no and so you're right and and but this is not our rule this is mm. epa and the epa you know, the, the way the EPA works is the state is not does not have their own EPA. The state is currently authorized by the feds to implement their rules. So you know how this works. Things roll I still down. I don't now. understand it all. Like how they, uh, anyways. I, yeah. So this is where we're at. That's what the gentleman it's on told private me today. property. I don't understand how the EPA is even involved in that. Because it's, uh, as he said, it's health and welfare. Because if you have people in the house that are drinking and water that's contaminated with lead, just like all the lead paint rules they came out with. So again, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm opposed to, I'm not opposed to the landowner getting money to do it themselves. What I'm opposed to is me having to hire a contractor well, why, to one personal yeah, property. Why would the town have to be so, responsible for that? And I don't know the rules yet. And it could be that we just have to be a funneling mechanism yeah to the homeowner, but that means we still have to see the bills. We still have to make sure that the person had it done and still have to make sure that they paid the contract. So so. The school one. <clears throat> yeah, right. So I don't know how it's gonna sugar out. All I know is the short term goal is October, 2024. So <laughs> please fill out your water service line um, information and drop it off at the town. Wait, and you know the one, I think it's through mine now. <laughs> you can have this one, I can throw it out. <laughs> Great. I was like, yeah, I didn't know. yeah, you do. And uh, so I'll sit in the garbage. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so we're doing that. Um, also had a conversation with um, uh, Frank Severy in Rochester today. Looks like the town of Rochester uh, has a uh, couple of projects that they're going to be taking care of on Camp Brook Road. And he said, don't you have another project to do? <laughs> I said, what kind of projects are they doing? Culverts or something? Yeah, they have a couple culvert placements. And so we may be working with Rochester to try to schedule closure at the same time so that we do our project when they're doing theirs. That way we can share the cost of signage. And, you know, I'm just going to apologize right now. It's, I, I told them I didn't really feel like up for another public meeting, but, we, you know. Um, so Rochester has some things to do there. So we're going to try to work to coordinate that. Um, we also talked about Frank and I told him that we had moved forward last year, looking for money from Peter Welch for another federal earmark for Camp Brook, um, and that we didn't make it through the, you know, hoops of fire, but talked to Frank and said, you know, next time, would you work with me to do it? So we could make an application to either Senator Sanders or, uh, well, Welch uh, looking for, you know, some sizable money to do the, deal with the infrastructure and paving on Camp Brook. And they said they would, he said he'd be more than happy to do that. We could get support letters from Warva, both fire departments. They also had done a traffic survey up there not long ago, so we could have some data about how many cars go over. So maybe a joint application for an earmark could go. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh I told Frank that I'd reach out to Jay McDonald and see when they were coming and uh, we'll try to coordinate our efforts. So don't shoot the messenger. Uh, but we are at some point going to be closing Camp Brook Road again. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, Lord. That, so yeah. Doug's like, I don't care. Yeah. He knows his way around. Exactly. So Quiet. anyway, Quieter. yeah, you know, yeah. it, 
the detour is always one of those, but you know, it puts more people over the dirt roads and yeah. stuff. So I'm just going to say, I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Below our house. Those people from Rochester aren't going to be coming up over the mountain to go. Right. So they're going to have to do 100 and 107. Exactly. So be a little, that'd be nice. Really. Yeah. 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 So, and, and then we can split the cost of signage and, and work together. And, and uh, you know, we owe a big thanks to Rochester. They were great during this project. They, we certainly, we paid them, reimbursed them, but they plowed and sanded a section of our road, um, which, you know, we couldn't have done it without them. They were super helpful about it. And um easy to deal with. So big thank you to John. He's the road foreman in Rochester for doing that. And um, yeah, they're good neighbors. So, but yeah, so at some point um, to be determined, we will be closing camp record again. Mm. Tell your friends. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, let's get the phone calls. Over. But oh, but it'll be, it won't be the winter time. So but that's it for the town manager's report. And uh, oh, just reminding people of uh, Town meeting next week. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, select board meeting minutes from the 12th of February. I have one you correction. Said you Jordan's said. last name was listed as Foreman, and I believe it's Garrow. Oh, let's see if I didn't even catch that. Sorry, Jordan. I didn't even see that. Okay, any other <laughs> corrections to the meeting minutes? No, no, if not, that. just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Yeah. And there was a bunch of other communications in there. Uh, Rec committee was in there, planning commission. I think there was one other one. I can't remember what it was. Oh, hey, Ellie, can I ask you a question? I forgot um, to ask you a question. I, I can't remember... Uh, Honestly, if I emailed with you or if I emailed with um, Kyle Cartwright, because so I can't remember, so I apologize, but um, I had seen your notes and I had talked to Michael Parker. I think I'd, I know I'd emailed somebody saying that he'd recommended possibly some product called Elephant Snot to remove the graffiti. But if we do that, it's going to remove the... Um, coding that we already paid for so i had emailed and i and like i said i apologize i thought it was you basically we're not going to do anything we're just going to skateboard it off we're not going to paint it we're not going to do anything with it and we'll just skate yeah. it off um it, you didn't email me you no it must have been it. kyle i apologize yeah. right and and we had talked about not doing anything because we've gotten all kinds of ideas of power wash and all kinds of things and so we it's um, confirmed that, you know, and thought we could do something in the spring or summer, but we decided, no, we'll just, yeah. Yeah. And you know what, luckily, thank goodness is it was nothing vulgar. And yeah. I'm sure once those people get out there with their skateboards and bikes, it'll probably just wear right down. And I'm afraid too, that if we do do it, that it's just an invitation to come back. And then maybe we won't like so much what they put the next time, unfortunately. We might kids have a project, a yeah. design project or whatever. Yeah. But, but so many of people that we asked, like Dana or the art teacher, they said it would be shiny paint and it would it would be ruin ruin more it it yeah. more or less would ruin it more. So it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't be a good idea. Well hopefully Kyle's flipped pample wear it right off. So <laughs> yeah. All right, good. I so yeah, I, it must have been Kyle. I just can't I couldn't remember because he was kind of overseeing it. So it must have been him that I'd emailed. So I just couldn't remember. But no, I didn't All right. So it was probably him because he and I were dealing with the construction. So excellent. All right. Well, good, 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 good. It'll be I'm one of those things. So it's good that you asked me here tonight. Thanks. Because um I'm sure that um we we work that at our meeting next week. We have a meeting next week, so well, it'll probably come yeah, yeah. up. No, I, I saw it. I was come up yeah. Did we decide? Well, yeah. I know it's it's unfortunate. Yeah, so, only a bummer. Okay. 
Well, thanks. For yeah, no, thanks for because we're yeah. clarifying because I wasn't yeah. I saw it in there and I meant to ask. So yeah. and um so thank right. you. Anything else to come before the board? Um just reminding, oh, so the CLA um Rick Benson did send a list to uh to our district advisor, Jen Myers, and Jen's gonna review the list and then get back to us. So whether or not that's gonna change our CLA or not. You know, probably unlikely, but we did have some questions about why some things that Mo and Judy wanted omitted, um, they included. So, you know, we'll see. We're trying. And I'll let you know what the results are. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Hearing none, just need a motion to adjourn. So we'll move. Second. Second.